Hi, I'm Michael King, and today I'm going to walk you through a company size up. A company size up is a systematic way to build a framework for evaluating a company from the point of view of either a shareholder who may be interested in buying the stock or a creditor who may be looking to provide a loan or purchase a bond issued by the company. A size up systematically looks at external and internal factors that are going to influence the company's success or failure. From an external point of view, we're going to look at three factors. The outlook for the economy, the company's industry, and the degree of competition within that industry. From an internal point of view, we're going to look bottom-up at two different dimensions that are qualitative and quantitative. From a quant qualitative point of view, we're going to talk about the strategy, leadership, products and pricing, marketing, and operations. Quantitatively, we're going to look at use financial ratios and financial statements to evaluate both the operating performance of the company as well as its financial performance. The goal of the size up is really to develop an understanding of the top-down and bottom-up factors that are going to go into your um, financial model whether it's a relative valuation based on market multiples or a fundamental valuation based on a discounted cash flow model. So here are the topics that I'm going to be covering today and you can think of this as a cheat sheet to keep uh, referring to whenever looking at a company. The external size up has three parts, the economy, the industry, and the degree of competition. We're going to look at factors such as the pest analysis, key success factors, as well as Michael Porter's five forces. The internal size up has both qualitative and quantitative dimensions. A key output will be looking at the financial ratios as well as a SWOT analysis using strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So let's look a little more closely at the kind of questions you might be asking. From an external point of view, you would be looking at what's the outlook for GDP or for the economy? because the business cycle is going to be a key influence affecting the company's sales as well as the performance of their industry. You may want to know, is this a cyclical or a counter-cyclical or non-cyclical industry? What are the industry uh, trends, both from a point of view of political or economic uh, forces, such as regulation or change of government, what about technological or social trends, such as the exposure to the environment or digitalization and uh, new technologies? How can we think about the intensity of rivalry, the potential for new entrants, or power of suppliers versus customers? From an internal point of view, we're going to look at who is the leader, what is the strategy of the company? We're going to look at the leadership, how they attract and retain talent, how they think about the product or service and who their target customers are, how they price that product and market it, how they develop a brand. Many of these companies may be looking at cross-border supply chains or important distribution networks, and we're going to finally want to look at what the financial strategy is and how they're doing in terms of their financial metrics. So let's take a look at how to size up the economy. So we're going to want to look at the outlook for GDP which is the measure of overall economic growth for both a uh, country as well as for the global economy. Many industries are cyclical or have some sensitivity to the business cycle and we're going to want to understand what fluctuations are coming from the overall economy that will be influencing the industry. The kind of measures that we're going to look at are going to be interest rates, inflation, exchange rates, and commodity prices. When looking at interest rates, we're going to want to understand both the shape of the yield curve, which is a, a forecast for what to expect for the economy, as well as what the cost of borrowing is for both short and long term. Looking at the consumer prices will give us an idea of the ability for the company to raise prices in the future, and we're going to want to understand both the impact of uh, sales from abroad or imports of goods, as well as uh, the cost of key inputs such as oil or potentially key products. Finally, we're going to look at the state of capital markets. And by capital markets, I mean the stock and the bond markets. 
not only because it will influence valuation, but also because it will influence the ability of the company to raise money to finance growth. Second, we're going to look at the outlook for the industry. Industries may be described as cyclical, in which case they follow the overall business cycle, non-cyclical, in which case they are not as sensitive, and counter-cyclical, which means they move in an opposite direction to the overall economy and do well when the economy is doing poorly. You want to understand what kind of industry your company is in in order to understand how the outlook for GDP is going to affect their sales. The stock market is a good leading indicator for the economic cycle as shown in this chart. A boom in the stock market may predict a turnaround in the econ economy that is coming with a lag of three to six months. When the stock market reaches a top and turns around, it may signal that the economy is about to head into recession. Another aspect of an industry analysis is to look at the industry's life cycle. Different industries are at dis different stages based on uh, how long they've been around, the degree of competition and the products they offer. You have industries in a startup phase that will be very low growth and then rapid growth as they, uh, they exponentially increase sales of their products and services, leading to maturity, eventually stabilization, and potentially decline. You need to be able to understand where the industry is and where the company sits on this industry life cycle in order to evaluate its, its uh, future. A key acronym for evaluating the industry is called PEST, where political, economic, and social and technological factors are going to be influencing the company. For example, uh, a change in government, new regulations introduced by the existing government, changes in tax rates, these are going to have an influence on the company's profitability as well as their, their pricing power. You may see that there are important environmental, social, or governance factors that are going to influence the industry. And finally, technology has been disrupting many different industries, both creating opportunities for new entrants as well as leading to heavy investments by incumbents. The goal of this industry analysis is to understand what are the key drivers for the valuation of a company, which we call the key success factors. Those are the two or three things that every company that wants to be a leader in this industry has to be able to master and demonstrate. Next, we're going to look at the degree of competition within an industry using Michael Porter's five forces. As seen here, it, it is a systematic way to look both internally as well as externally uh, at what the forces are that will affect the ability of a company to earn and above average returns for its shareholders, as well as sustain a competitive advantage over time. You're going to want to look at the degree of competition in terms of the market share of the key players and the number of key players. You're going to want to look at uh, the potential for new entrants to come into the industry or the ability of customers to shop around and find substitutes, as well as the bargaining power of suppliers. Next we're going to look at the internal size up, which is a bottom up way of looking at the company. The internal size up is going to have two dimensions, qualitative and quantitative. What I'm showing here are the qualitative factors that you're going to look at. We're going to look at the strategy, the leadership or the ability to attract and retain talent, the way that the company's products and services are priced and their pricing power and the advantage they offer over their competitors. Key distribution or operational issues or logistics associated with this company. How they market themselves, how they position themselves, who their target customers are, and what is their financial strategy in terms of do they have a target credit ratio? Are they looking at a certain payout ratio for dividends? What, is their, uh, what are the key metrics that's being communicated by the treasurer and the CFO? You can conclude your qualitative analysis, called a SWOT analysis, in which you look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats facing the company. Brainstorming around those four dimensions is extremely valuable for identifying forces that may influence 
your evaluation of the company either positively or negatively. The second part of the internal size up is to look at quantitative factors. Here we're going to use the financial statements and the financial ratios to evaluate the company's business performance as well as their financial performance. A ratio is simply one number divided by another. Financial analysts group these ratios into a number of different categories. As you can see below, there are ratios for looking at the liquidity of the firm, which is its ability to pay bills when due, the efficiency with which it manages working capital, looking at inventories, accounts payable and accounts receivable, the leverage of the firm, which is how much debt is used to finance the assets, the profitability of the firm, looking at the return both on the assets as well as to the shareholders in the form of return on equity. And a very useful ratio, the DuPont decomposition, which basically pulls together different aspects to look at what is contributing to the return on equity, profit margins or the net margin, the uh, amount of turnover of sales, as well as the uh, amount of leverage in the financial structure. Ratios should be used in one of three ways to look at a firm versus its own historical performance, which is called trend analysis, to look at a firm relative to its peers, which is cross-sectional at a given point in time, as well as to look at a, the ratios relative to the company strategy. Some companies may have a high cost strategy, whereas others may have a low cost strategy, and that should be reflected in the ratios. Many of these ratios can be calculated in different ways, and you will find that analysts may take the average and looking at the start of the end of the year for balance sheet items, or they may use a point in time. You have to be careful when using ratios that you're looking at the same ratios on an apples to apples basis when comparing them with others. So now that you've looked at your company size up from both a top down and a bottom up perspective, how can you use that when evaluating a company? Let's take the example of uh, WestJet, where you may be looking to evaluate whether to buy, sell, or hold the stock. You could have done a financial analysis and concluded that WestJet is the low cost carrier in the airlines industry. This is a good statement, but it could be made stronger by supporting it using a ratio. For example, you could say that WestJet is a low cost airline as supported by its low operating expenses to sales ratio of 83%. A ratio though taken out of context doesn't have much value, so a better statement would be to compare WestJet's performance to peers in the airline industry. Here you can see that WestJet does appear to be the low cost operator with a ratio of 83% of expenses to sales relative to 92% for its peers. An even better statement, however, would be to look at peers that are most relevant because the airline industry has many companies, some of which are going to be better than others. So you could compare WestJet to the average ratio from only three Lufthansa, Singapore Airlines, and Southwest Airlines. And as you can see, their operating expense ratio is lower but still WestJet is a low cost producer. We've looked internally and we've used a financial ratio to make a qualitative statement, but now we should look externally and bring a top-down perspective as well. You could say that WestJet is the best performing airline in what is a cyclical and competitive industry. At a time when the economy is doing poorly, WestJet is potentially going to do better than its peers. That would be an example of using different analysis from a top-down and a bottom-up point of view from your size-up to make a statement that is convincing.